When most people think of the future, we envision cool tech like flying cars or neon lights everywhere. But we don't tend to think about the evolution of humans. Future technology undoubtedly means fancy gizmos and high efficiency transportation. But what about on the biological level? Developments into the very genetic foundation of life on Earth. In this video, let's discuss genetics and how our future may use it. We are still in the infant stages when it comes to understanding genetics. What started as observing plants and selectively breeding animals bloomed into chromosomal theories, gene editing, and CRISPR technologies. The truth is, we don't understand genetics well enough to feel comfortable editing ourselves. Yet. This is not for lack of trying, of course. With research, pretty soon we will have the technology to consider genetic alterations common or even routine. Think of the good we could do for life on Earth, but we definitely need to talk about the bad that could come with it. The first obvious point is the possibility to prevent or even eradicate diseases that have plagued humans since the beginning of time. Even if there is a pill to cure ALS, wouldn't it be better to simply remove it from the population? A preventative action, rather than a reactionary one. We could upgrade our immune systems to fight off cancer like a weak common cold, or eliminate mental disorders entirely. Once we eliminate afflictions, let's move into making us more adaptive to harsh environments. Maybe we have perfect vision, or even see a wider spectrum into the UV or infrared. We can hold our breath for dozens of minutes, or inhale harmful chemicals that our lungs filter out. Everyone can withstand cosmic radiation when we visit the stars, and our lifespans are quadrupled, making space travel more accessible. We could adapt to any situation that guarantees the survival of our species. These modifications aren't necessarily all human, either. We could create a more robust honeybee, making pollination more efficient, or engineer bacteria to help us terraform other planets. Like all revolutionary tech, it heralds a future full of upside. The promise of no genetic defects or diseases is very appealing. In fact, there was a geneticist in China who had exactly those intentions. Regulations be damned. After all, what parent wouldn't volunteer for the procedure once it becomes common practice? But while you're tinkering with the genetic defects, could you just change the sex? We've always wanted a boy. Oh, and can you make him six foot six? I always loved basketball, so now he has a chance to go pro. Let's also increase his overall intelligence, because what decent parent wouldn't? The rationalization starts. Maybe it's even put into law, flagged as a human's rights violation if you don't enhance. And so what started as cancer prevention now introduces the age of designer babies, literal catalogs with a selection of desirable traits. As always, the ultra wealthy will be given first dibs on creating their little genetically altered angels, widening the gap between rich and poor. And when you have a few enhanced individuals mixed into a population of unenhanced, class structures will begin to emerge. Like in the movie Gattaca, perhaps even employment qualifications are subject to your genetic profile. Opportunities are based on which lab batch you were born in, and rank based on merit has little meaning in this dystopian future. Ethically speaking, this is all very taboo. You can treat this entire video as speculation, but it is important that we have an open and frank dialogue on the topic because it is most certainly in our future. We get weirded out by the idea of modifying the human genome because of, well, you know, eugenics and the ultra-nationalist desires to literally create a perfect human race. Obviously, we need to acknowledge that there are real concerns for ethical motivations. From a religious point of view, in many cultures we are considered to be created in God's image, and to some that form is perfection. Obviously, editing something created by God directly would rub religious communities the wrong way. Some pro-evolution and human purist advocates may also share this opinion, claiming we should walk the path of divine or natural selection and not cheat, even if faced with extinction. What if all doesn't go as planned? What about unintended changes to non-targeted genes? Obviously, if you change the odds of developing cancers, but you accidentally grow two extra arms, we would chalk that up as a failure. But what about failures that affect entire ecological systems? In the book Upgrade by Blake Crouch, an unforeseen consequence of releasing engineered locusts into the world affects sea germination that ultimately leads to global famine that kills hundreds of millions. The scary part is, that scenario is entirely plausible. It's a warning to not mess with Mother Nature, especially a gene that is passed down to offspring. We could cause major issues, even with benevolent intentions. Notably, the book also dives into black market demand for exotic and grotesque animal spawns. Pink fuzzy elephants and man-hunting saber-toothed tigers. Once the technology is out, there will be all types of crooked status symbols and inhumane abominations. The haves and the have-nots are a volatile duo, especially if the haves are literally engineered to be mentally and physically stronger. If humans are good at one thing, that will be defining anyone different from them as a threat. Unless there is a common goal that unites humans together on their similarities, we are doomed to tear each other down based on the smallest of differences. 
wars have been waged for less, and genetically engineered militaristic super soldiers would definitely be a substantial catalyst for war. And the soldiers don't need to be considered human to be effective. Imagine a sort of humanoid chimera that is bred for war and smart enough to devise military strategy. Its sole purpose is to be a biological tool, devoid of emotion, feeling, or empathy. Or why not just create clone soldiers who don't qualify as citizens? I'm sure the militaries of the world would love to have such a specimen under their control. Ultimately, I'm conflicted with the subject. On one hand, I believe it's better to be in control of our biological future, rather than be a victim to nature. On the other hand, it will take a great deal of human restraint and philanthropic collaboration, which is probably just naive optimism. Like artificial intelligence, I think it's a matter of when, not if. I just hope for the best and we will be wise to plan for the worst. There are countless examples of why human modifications will be controversial, and like history shows, drastic change is not welcome in most societies. So what if our future is engineered, but just not entirely biological? Check out this next video on why our future will probably involve synthetics, and why we will all be part machine someday.